Hi ladies, it's Sally again here from Sally Bonnie Fibre and Art. So I'm just going to cover needles because um, I think obviously it's, re it's really important. Just like knitting, you need an, a needle um, with that craft, with sewing, embroidery. So these are really important tools um, of the trade. So needle, needle felting uses a long thin needle and with this needle, you gently poke. You actually poke into the wool. And when I say gently, a lot, a lot of people, um, you know, certainly um, needle felters and felt artists talk about stabbing. Um, but if we start... Uh, really at the beginning stage by thinking that it's not a stab it's a gentle jab or a poke that goes in and out of the wool and those notches tangle the fibres of the wool together and then as you felt the wool starts to feel firmer and it begins to shrink so if we think about it as a gentle jab we're going to save a lot of needles um, going forward. And um, I'm saying that from experience, ladies. I went through an awful lot um, of needles. So I've added two needles in your felting pack. So there's one that has a little bit of red on it. It's just a little bit of red nail varnish, actually. That's the more expensive um, needle. And that's by a lady called Heidi Feathers. And over the years of doing this, I've found her needles to be great. I don't get commission to say that, by the way, but I do find that, that they're great. And then you've got one that's um, a chrome end. And I'll just make this just a little bit so you can see there. But obviously, you're going to have these in your pack anyway. So you can see very clearly one's red and one is chrome. So I would start with the chrome one. It's it's you know it still does the job. It's um it's just kind of I guess like an artist with paint brushes. You can buy a standard brush, or you can buy like one of the horsehair expensive brushes. So but honestly, it's it's up to you. But I've done that because um I was kind of thinking about about when I first started. So on these needles, you'll see there is this little latch, like a little latch at the top. So these can be used to keep in what's called a stitch punch tool. So I'm gonna to show you a few examples um, in a minute. Um, again, you know, it's it's down to preference really. But many painters, uh, sorry, not painters, many suppliers of needles actually paint that latch. So I've painted it myself today for, for these reasons, but it's really handy because there's a colour code to the, um, to the latch. So you will see, again, I'll just make this a little bit larger. You will see on this needle that um it's it from the latch sorry i'll do it can't see it otherwise from the latch here you've got a thick part here which is where you hold the needle and then from here it goes finer so you will see then um with this needle needle that the rest of the needle has got um a very thin shape and on this shaft there's very tiny barbs. So the more the barbs the needle has, the quicker it is to fell. And these come in different gauges, these needles. So they go from 42, which is very fine, to 36, which is very thick. So both of these that you have are a 38 gauge. These are classed really as a medium needle. And I feel that they're really good for starting out as they'll help to firm and shape. And they're really good for this project because you have no fine detail with this project. So as well as the gauge number, they've got different numbers of barbs and the barbs you can feel um, you have to do it really gently because they're quite sharp at the end of the needle. On some of the needles, they're finer, so you'll feel that on Heidi um, feathers, it feels a little bit finer. 
so um again the more barbs the more quickly it'll fell but the less accurate and finely detailed the finish will be but that's not a problem for us with our project so the needles you have are star needles they've got four working edges which again means that they've got more notches on the surface and they felt quickly uh, without leaving too many holes and visible holes is something that you can begin to see in your work again for the purpose of, of what we're doing, it's kind of covered up anyway, what, what we felt. So, um, but it's just something for you to be aware of. Um, and I have got a few tips that I can help you with along the way with that. And I think the more you learn and create using this practice, just like um, an artist, you, you know, you're going to have your favourites. So it's good to try different projects and, and different tools. So those are the needles that we're going to be using. So I'll just pop them back in there. So I talked earlier about punch tools, which can be helpful when you're starting out. And there's lots of options on the market. And they can actually help when you first start, start out with wrist strain as well. But I'd always say to anybody, I mean, I think the excitement of starting something new, you, you kind of want to go on and on. And um, actually, I don't know why I'm saying new because I'm shocking sometimes if I start a piece and I just want to carry on. I can be sat for hours and think I've not had a brew. I've not been to the loo, you know, but um, you are starting out. So I have to teach you good practice, even if I don't do that myself. So there's different options. And when I started, I bought a few of them. So this is a single needle option. I'll just take it out. So you get this little light plug and you just hang, just hang it on there. Whoops, sorry. Just hang it on there. It fits into the slot and you just, sorry, doing it flipping upside down now. And pop it in. Okay. And then you've got something to hold then while you gently jab or poke the wool so I guess it's like holding a pen and they do do a pen version now they didn't when I first started out but they do do um, a pen version so that's like your single and then um you've got this is this is a, a larger version of of that one so this is a nine punch hole and this one screws you screw, unscrew it I do like the wooden ones, actually. Um, I must admit, more than the plastic. So our plastic ones available. I'll, I'll show you that one in a moment. But here you just hang them in. So um, I'll just fasten that back up again. Don't mix your needles, though, when you're using these. So if you're doing 38, put 38 in. Because um, otherwise that's going to mess up your work. So that's a, a nine gauge. And then these are classed as like a fixed gauge, even though, um, just carefully, it's, it's a bit more fiddly, this plastic one, but same thing. You get a little cover on the back. And there, again, you can see all the needles are in there. And this is a seven, seven one, but unlike the wooden one, you can see it's got this little plastic cover. So it kind of protects you from overstabbing. So when you buy these, that they do actually the this these come with needles. These wooden ones don't, or you can buy packs, but the needles tend to be the cheaper needles. So again, it might be good, you know, for you know for when when you're starting out. And this one actually, and this one. These are good when you're doing, if you progress and want to do landscapes and things, doing bigger areas or like say you were doing a rabbit's ear and you want to like, you know, do all over. They're, they're good. They are good for that. Um, now, just a word of caution is, especially with this one and this one, you can be really heavy handed. So you can break needles easier um, with that as well. So just I'd just be careful. So all of these things I've shown you, they, they range from about four pounds up to ten pounds. Um you can get them off the internet, get them on eBay, get them from Amazon, 
people like Heidi Feathers, they all they all stock those. So, but just just have a little look. And sometimes in charity shops, you can find bits and bobs of things like this because people have maybe given it a go and they didn't like it, or they might be the odd kit. So it's always worth looking at that because some of the kits online are quite expensive. And um, I I know I got half of a kit in a charity shop and I had a few bits and bobs in there were, that were well worth a couple of pounds I paid. So, um, yeah, have a, have a look at that. So the other thing that you can have are these, which are finger protectors. Now, sometimes when you buy these tools, you get these with it. So I did try. Um, I didn't like them very much, but I'm a person who don't like wearing rubber gloves and things or a thimble when I'm, I'm sewing. So the idea of these is that when your needle felt in, they're going to save your fingers. So I ditched these quite early on because I just found that they bought me a little bit. Um, again, these, these are only a couple of pounds. So one of the things that I did do, um, you're not really going to need it for this this project um is i save you know when you get this packaging um i save these for a lot of my projects i mean i do wet felting as well and they make you know i can make great um templates from them but this one i actually use you can see i've put a little hole in when i was doing a rabbit's ear and i wanted to do round the edge i, I use this because it gives me a bit more to hold on to so, you know, be creative, be a bit innovative. It saves you a little little bit of money. Um, it is painful when you stab yourself. I'm not going to lie to you. Um, so it's so important that you keep your eye on the needle, that you don't stab hard, because actually stabbing hard isn't going to create a nice piece um, in terms of, of felting. It's not like knitting, where you can watch the TV but it is very addictive and it is relaxing once you get into it. So, you know, I can sit and listen to music. Or if I want the TV on in the background, but you need to keep your eyes on the needle. Um, that's probably the last word I'll say on the matter. I think that's everything about needles, certainly in terms of what you, you need to know for the basics. But if you do want to look into them further, if you want to learn about the different gauges, you know, the really fine needles, especially when you're doing sculptures and things are, are fabulous. Um, you can Google needle felting um, needles um, or you can go on Heidi Feathers. She has a great needle guide. So um, I'll leave it there for now, ladies, and um, I'll speak to you again soon. Thank you.